In this video, I'm going to be talking about um, Genesis Revisited, Zachariah Stitch in page 202. I'd like to remind you that I don't agree with everything Manly P. Hall says, everything Zachariah Stitch says, um, Mavon Vlasky, Jordan Maxwell, Michael Zarian, the, the whole cloud, right? I don't agree with everything they say, but I agree with a lot of the things they say, and I agree with a lot of the translations of symbols. Now, the emblem of entwined serpents. In the biblical tale of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, the antagonist of the Lord God who had caused them to acquire knowing, the ability to procreate, was the serpent. Nahash in Hebrew. The term has two other meanings. He who knows secrets and he who knows copper. Those other meanings or word plays are found in the Sumerian epithet boozer for Inki, which meant he who solves Inki secrets. So who's Inki? He's the bad guy. And Lil's the guy who rapes Nana, but we'll get into that later. I I have therefore suggested in previous writings that that in the original Sumerian version the serpent was Inki. His emblem was entwined serpents. It was a symbol of his cult center, Eridu, of his African domains in general, and of the pyramids in particular. And it appeared on Sumerian illustrations on cylinder seals of the events described in the Bible. What did the emblem of entwined serpents, the symbol for medicine and healing to this very day, represent? The discovery of modern science of the double helix structure of DNA. Offers the answer. The entwined serpents em emulated the structure of the genetic code, the secret knowledge for which enabled Inky to create the Adam and then grant Adam and Eve the ability to procreate. The emblem of Inky as a sign of healing was invoked by Moses who, when he made a Nahash Nehoseth, a copper serpent, to halt an epidemic afflicting the Israelites. Was the involvement of copper in the triple meanings of the term and in the making of the copper serpent by Moses due to some unknown role of copper in genetics and healing? Recent experiments conducted at the universities of Mississippi, excuse me, University of Minnesota and St. Louis suggested that it is indeed so. They showed that radionuclide copper 62 is a positron em emitter, <clears throat> valuable in imagining blood flow, and that other copper compounds can carry pharmaceuticals to living cells, including brain cells. So this is why there's copper compounds and lead compounds in certain herbs. But now... How can those be applied in a fashion that is safe and healthy? I'm not going to get into, but I will show you these symbols and give you some thoughts and put this fucking book away before Stitchin comes around and his wife, or whoever it is, he comes tries to beat me up with a purse with a bunch of feminists. Let me break it down for you. The feminist school of thought sides with Inky. Why? Because Inky was competing, competing with Enlil, and Enlil had, you know... He was highlighted for raping a, a certain female. And Inky, even though he had done all kinds of sexual immoral acts, somehow feminines side with him, and they say, Emil is bad, he's holding down women, and Inky lets women be free and wants people be free, so they side with Anki instead of Enlil, okay? And who is the great god, Anu? So who is Saint Anne? She is the female version of Anu. You can draw parallels to that when there is no such thing. Okay? The female has been exaggerated in importance. Thus, all women come up short. That's why in the Bible it says, do not allow a woman to teach or have authority over man as far as in the church. Okay? We're, you know, we're talking about religion. We're talking about God. And we're talking about things that have to do with the male temple and the man's perspective. A woman should be silent because she can't understand a man and God is a man. And he impregnated the earth to create us. So the female, you're standing on the female. The female is supposed to be at the feet of man as he created man first and created female second. Now, am I some kind of sexist fucking pig? Or am I just drawing um, conclusions... You know, am I extrapolating conclusions from what I've been given? The text, different people's opinions. I consider different perspectives. I've been to different high schools. I see the different perspectives of it, and I know what the true one is. I've always known it. And I see the truth in everybody's perspective, and I know who's closer to it. Thank you.